Look, straight to it, Nathan. Um, is it devastating news to have two of your young players test positive to a banned drug? Yeah, absolutely it is. And when we, when we received the news on Friday morning, the club received the news on Friday morning, um, I think Purdy you know, put it accurately, we were, we were devastated to find out that that, was, um, that that was a fact about the positive test. Um, you know, we've tried, we've provided as much support as we can to, the, to both Lockie and Josh. Um, there's still plenty of information that we don't have, um, but at this, in, at this point in time, we're just trying to um, support the two as well as we possibly can and the, and the rest of the, the club um, to make sure that, the, um, that they're able to go and fulfil their duties and responsibilities this week. Did you talk to both of them? Um, yeah, yeah, I did early days, like on the Friday, yes. Um, and they're at a complete loss to understand where it's where the positive test has come from um, and so that's that's the information that we have we we're waiting for the the b sample on april 14 but as you said i mean most of the time that's a formality um, so then the test is to find out where this substance has come from so, so but tell us about the character of these young men because a lot of people don't know them they watch them play football for your football club this is a heavy duty drug and people are thinking how did it get in? Yeah, well, that's the, that's the that's where you go to, isn't it? Yeah, the character um, of the people. Well, no, the, the fact that where did the drug come from and, oh, well, and how's this come to be and, and what does this say about them, you know, as young men? Um, you know, they're very decent, upstanding young men. Um, if you'd asked me a couple, and this is nearly a standard line in it, if you'd asked me a couple that I wouldn't have thought would have ever tested positive to anything, well, they'd be right up there, these, these two boys. Um, they're clean skins, and, and, yet, and, yet, and yet they've returned a positive sample uh, to a performance-enhancing drug. I want to throw a curly one in there. Do you feel, are they, are they in positions where their uh, careers or positions in the team are under threat? Because what happens when a lot of people think, oh, you know, my, my career might be failing, I might be... and they may take this? Well, this is, this is the thing. Keefe's come off an ACL four years ago. Josh has had two years of, of feet problems and uh, sesamoid problems and shin splints. And basically, at, at one stage there, we needed to convince him that we still loved him to want to stay and, and sign another contract. So both of these boys have had reasons over the, throughout their career why they might want to go to it, as you're suggesting. But they've had their opportunities, they haven't, and they've just worked yeah. hard and they've plugged away and they're right in the sweet spot of their careers, ready to have a real crack at it at 23 and 25, respectively, Josh and, and Lockie. Um, and we're devastated for them, they're devastated and we just need to get to the bottom of it to work out how this has come about. Jerry, you mentioned it before, which I thought was quite interesting, there's a couple of extremes in this, wasn't there? There was Contador and then, did you say someone else actually got off yeah, with Michael contaminated Rogers, meat or something? Yeah, like that? Do you, do you have more information on, on that? Uh, he went to the, he got the provisional suspension and beat it at the tribunal. He was able to prove, and that's, I mean, from at face value, these Collingwood players don't yet have a story. No, no. Um, they haven't figured out the circumstances. They're going back to New Zealand. They, their lawyers, our understanding at the Herald Sun is they're with their managers because the Collingwood Football Club, in a strange sort of situation, Bucks, you spoke to them on Friday, Gary Pert, the chief executive, spoke on Friday, mm. and Barmy, the football manager. But they haven't been really been able to speak to them since because mm. they've gone away from the mm. club and sought legal representation because they're going to need it. Mm. That hasn't allowed you who you coach them every day to sort of talk to them and get a, get an answers. We'll get speak. An answer. We'll speak to both players in the next 24 to 48 hours to actually understand what's going on because the club's in the dark relatively. Um, the independent legal advice has said that no, we can't talk to you right now. So over the weekend we haven't, you know, whilst we had that initial the initial um, conversations on Friday, mainly with um, Purdy and Barmy, we haven't been able to speak to the players regarding the specifics and the facts. Um, and that's something that we need to get to from their perspective so that we ha understand where we stand as a football mm -hmm. club. One thing we have done and had the opportunity to do is to go through with a fine tooth comb our diet and nutrition program and we're absolutely categorically sure that I we mean, are. We I are know you did that and you're yeah. probably doing it because of, of, of a legal well, position. We, we, but imagine if that everything. was in your entire, it was found in your entire nutritional program. I mean, 
Forget Essendon, that's the biggest story ever. It's mm. not in your mm. nutritional program. Mm. What they're dealing with, the football club, and they have to, as much as the players have to deal with their legal position, so does the, so does the football club. Because what's happening now, the, the lawyers are asking the players, right, yeah. what did you eat? Where did you go? Right? In New Zealand, what was your program? So, right, oh, we ate breakfast with lunch yeah. and yeah. dinner with Collingwood on these nights. Did you go out any certain mm. nights? Yeah. What did you eat? That's what's been formulated at the moment. So they were roommates in New Zealand? They were, yeah, and they're best mates. Um, you know, they've come down from Queensland, have travelled a similar path together. Um, in, many, in many ways have been joined at the hip through their whole career. So, I mean, the synapses go off and if you're looking for a conspiracy theory, you can find some there, but th that's all they are. We, we're looking for the facts as a footy club. Um, and <clears throat> on, on reflection, Josh and Lockie might have a bit more of an idea of, of what the possibility might be and we need to glean that from them in the next couple of days. How much does it affect your football club, the side, the team? Well, if I said not not as much as you'd think, well, I think that's exactly what happens. I mean, football clubs deal with an all, all manner, an all range of thunderbolts that, that, are, that come from outside what our main job is and that's to perform and to prepare and to perform to play footy at our best as often as we can. You know, we're supporting 43 other players, staff, coaches and a whole footy club uh, uh, along all of this as well. But the one thing those guys can do is go and influence the things that are in their control and that's what we keep coming back to. They're like yeah. long-term injury list players, well, are they? Matt Scharenberg yeah. and Brent McCaffrey do their knees late last year. They don't train with the group through pre-season. It's not as... Just because they're not out on the track doesn't mean that we neglect them. But it doesn't stop everyone else from going and plying their trade and, and improving. You've got two less players to choose from. What, so we, don't sure know what, we, 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 we don't know exactly what that's going to mean for us. We, mm. we haven't, I mean, Barmy would have, haven't fully explored that. But right now we're concerned about the, the stress levels, the mental state of these two young men who have been a part of our football club and are a part of our football club. We want to support them. We want to support all of the players there and, and staff that are that are at the club that have a job to do and we have a job to do because we've got supporters and members that we're trying to satisfy and please and obviously the work that's gone in, we don't want to throw that um, throw that out the back. Would they have played round one? Uh, Lock, Lockie wouldn't have, um, but Josh was well on the mix, yeah. One, one thing that happened today that was very important for us was to be able to be open and honest and transparent with the players at the footy club and with the staff and we couldn't actually... As a, as a club, we weren't, even with that knowledge of, of the positive A sample, we weren't able or um, entitled to share that information with, with the, the people inside the club until the AFL had announced it, and that actually didn't happen until the PA said that it could happen. That, that it could happen. I talked about the legal mm. argy-bargy today, and there were threats of going to the federal court at some stage this afternoon. Is it true... That and that would be a bad result. For oh, no, we were sick because of all it's, this. It's yeah, straight yeah. up and down. Yeah. yeah. So, is it true that when the, you address the other players, the other 43, the Collingwood Football Club said there's two players who have tested positive, but you can't name them? Is it, did that no, happen? No, or no, 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 no. We no? could, we couldn't, we couldn't. Oh, so you speak couldn't even tell them. We couldn't speak to our But they players. weren't at training. Did everyone ask where they were? Was it? I mean, there was. We there had was... five blokes that weren't at training today, mm -hmm. and therein lies the problem. If we say the that, other three, if we say that there are two that have. You know, well then which of the five that aren't here are the two and, and, and if we if we'd have mentioned if two Collingwood players have tested positive, well then forty five blokes are up. So I think once you know the mm. once we have the information, I think it's important to share the information, especially I'm... internally. And then you deal with the facts from there. Was I thought it was outstanding. To, yeah, was it shock to the players, to the other players? Oh absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And especially as as we said, these I mean you're talking about a couple of their brothers, you know, a couple of guys that they've gone in a battle with, that they've shared highs and lows, and um, you know, we're we're a young club that feels like we've we've prepared well, and we're looking forward to, to hitting the season hard. And these these two boys were a part of that, um, and we still hope they will be. But you know, we need to get to the bottom of that whilst not um, undermining mining the club's prospects early days.